According to a meme I read recently, human connectivity is vital for our well-being, which is why one of the worst feelings we can feel is feeling alone. In August of 2021, I was sitting in a group therapy circle at a mental health wellness facility outside Phoenix, Arizona. It was the third day of a uh, program that focused on anxiety, depression, and PTSD. And that day, all eyes were on me because I was about to answer the question, why are you here? Now, I did not want to answer this question because for me to answer it honestly, I was going to have to say things about myself that, to be candid with you, I didn't want to say out loud. But I was there to get better, and if I was going to get better, one of the things I was going to have to do was face some fears. That said... In the summer of 2006, I was standing alone in my kitchen when I had the first of what would become many stress-induced nervous breakdowns. It completely engulfed me. I was taken over by it, and it felt like my body was short-circuiting. And then as it started to progress, it started to really escalate. So all the emotions I felt were rage, self-loathing, and an energy inside me that had nowhere else to go. So without even thinking and completely unconsciously, I hit myself twice in the face and snapped out of it completely and I had no idea what I had just done. For the next 14 years, breakdowns and hitting myself like that happened two, three times a year, probably more because I'm sure I blocked a number of them out. But all of them were under the same circumstances. I was always by myself, I was always under a tremendous amount of stress, and it was always followed by crippling shame. Now, I have never hit another person, nor have I harmed an animal. But no one could know this about me because I did not want them to be scared for me or worse yet, scared of me. So therefore, I kept it secret, suppressed the shame, and because of that, I felt alone. And I hated feeling alone. During COVID quarantine, the isolation of it <laughs> brought every emotion that I'd ever suppressed to a head, and I had a breakdown of all breakdowns, and I finally admitted to myself and others that I needed help. I went to a series of doctors, answered thousands of questions, got a brain scan, and was officially diagnosed with, with depression, anxiety, and PTSD. And while I was getting that diagnosis, the doctor said to me, nonchalantly, you know why you hate yourself, right? And I said, no. <laughs> and he goes, it's a trauma response. And then this is the analogy he gave me. He goes, you know on the TV show Happy Days, when the jukebox is just malfunctioning, but then Fonzie walks over to it and hits it, and then it starts to work again? Essentially, and oversimplifying this, my nervous system is the jukebox. And he said that if I was able to address and put to rest some of my past traumas and the, dis the deregulated emotions that I was feeling that caused the breakdowns, then Fonzie goes away. Which brings me back to the group therapy circle at the mental health wellness facility where I just answered the question, why are you here with everything I just said? And the reception was incredible. I remember the relief I felt as everyone in that room gave me so much positive energy and I felt so much kindness, understanding, and empathy coming my way. And as a child, an only child who always loved being the center of attention, it was exhilarating. But then a woman named Teresa raised her hand. Now, Teresa's not her real name, but when I asked her if I could share this story, she said, yes, just don't use my real name. I said, what do you mean to call you? She said, Teresa. <laughs> now, Teresa said, and I'm paraphrasing, that what she had just seen me do was remarkably brave, and it had inspired her for the first time ever to say out loud to anyone that for many years she had also hit herself under the exact same circumstances that I just described. And in a flash, Teresa got to experience exactly what I just did because all of that positive energy went right to her. And I could see the relief on her face as she became unburdened by this shameful thing. And it was beautiful to watch. And even though it was brief, I will admit that while this was happening, I could not help but think, God damn, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> it was like she announced that she was pregnant at her friend's baby shower. I got over that quickly and we went on break and I was standing in the hallway and Teresa came up behind me and she really playfully said, hey, didn't mean to steal your spotlight back there. And I whipped around and I said in a tone that was so obviously kidding, I said, don't you ever steal my spotlight again. Hitting yourself, that's my thing. 
We laughed, and for the next couple of minutes, we started talking, commiserating about something that neither she nor I ever spoke candidly about to anyone. And it was such a wonderful feeling to do that with her because I always used to think that having the problem was weakness. But on that day with Teresa, it became so clear to me that not addressing the problem was weakness. And as we were about to head back into the room, there was still one more thing I needed to know. And I said, Teresa, you've never told anyone before. And you didn't have to. Why today? And Teresa took a moment and with such kindness said something to me I did not realize how much I needed to hear when she said, because I saw how hard it was for you to say and I didn't want you to feel alone. Thank you very much.